In the last section, we generated our express project and we spoke a little bit about exactly how traffic is routed around inside of an express application. In this section, we're gonna add our first little route handler to express and we'll talk a little bit more about how express is internally organized. So I'm gonna change back to my code editor, or excuse me, to my terminal to start. I'm gonna make sure that I'm inside of my server directory and then I'm going to start up my code editor inside of here. Now, note that I use the Atom code editor, and that's why I am able to run the command Atom dot. If you do not have Atom installed on your system, you will not be able to run this command, and you'll have to start up whatever code editor you like to use yourself. Okay, so I now have my code editor open inside of my server directory. Inside of here, you'll find the package.json file that we had generated previously. If we open that up, we'll see the list of dependencies that we currently have installed into our project. Right now, we only have Express. Inside of the node modules directory is the Express dependency and everything that Express itself depends upon. And so as you look at this list of folders, these are all dependencies that the Express library itself depends upon to run correctly. So Express is one of many things that we're going to be using throughout this project. Inside of this directory, you'll also notice the package-lock.json file. Now, you're only going to see this file right here if you are using at least NPM version 5. And as a reminder, I really would like if you used NPM version 5 throughout this course because we are really going to be depending upon some features that are provided by it. Okay, so that's enough to start. To create our first Express server and create a new route handler, we're gonna make a new file inside of our server directory called index.js. By convention, we usually call the root file or kind of the startup file inside of a node project index.js. Now you can certainly find other projects that use different uh, root file names, maybe start.js or web.js, whatever it needs to be. But for us, we're going to be going with convention, which is to use index.js. Then inside of here, we are going to create a brand new Express application and then add some logic to create our first route handler. At the very top of this file, we are first going to import in the Express library by writing the command const app, or excuse me, const express equals require express. Now a little bit of a talk about JavaScript modules throughout this course. You'll notice right here that I used the require keyword to get access to the Express library. In this course, we are going to be using what is referred to as common JS modules on the server side, because at present, the Node.js runtime only has support for common JS modules. When I say common JS modules, this is a system implemented in Node.js for requiring or sharing code between different files. Now, the reason that I specifically mention common JS right now is that you might have previously gone through other courses or other content or even your own applications where you used a different import syntax that looks like import express from express, like so. Oops, two S's, there we go. This import syntax right here makes use of a different module system called ES2015 modules. Node.js does not have support for ES2015 modules at the time of uh, at which I created this course. Now there are some workarounds for getting around that, but at the end of the day, those workarounds just makes the setup and development of our project a little bit more challenging. So on the server side of our application, we're going to use common JS modules, but on the front end, like on the React side of our application, we get much easier access to ES2015 modules. So on the React side of things, we will be using the import syntax. Okay. So sorry for that digression, but that's always a very common question. You know, why are we using require here? So I just want to take care of that very quickly. Now that we've imported or required in the express library, we will use it to create our first express application by writing const app equals express, like so. Inside of a single Node.js project or a single project, we might have several different express applications. And so by calling express like a function, it generates a new application that represents a running express app. Through, in this course, we're only going to be using a single app. And I would definitely feel comfortable saying that the 
absolute vast majority of projects that you'll probably ever work on are going to use a single application inside of them. This app object right here is used to set up configuration that will listen for incoming requests that are being routed to the express side of the app from the node side, and then route those requests on to different route handlers. So all these different route handlers that we're going to be creating over time will be all associated or somehow registered with this app object right here. Now just two more little lines of code that I want to write. We're going to write down the next line of code that is going to create a route handler and associate it with a given route. So let's write the code out and then we'll talk about what's going on with it. I'm going to say app.get. I'm going to give a first argument of a forward slash and then a second argument of an arrow function like so. This arrow function is going to have two arguments, which we'll receive with the names of rec and res. And then finally, inside of the arrow function body, I'm going to add the line res.send, and we'll pass to it an object that says hi colon there, like so. Okay, so this is our first taste of a route handler with Express. Now, there's a lot of stuff that is going on with this line of code right here. Before we do a full explanation of what's going on, I want to add one last line of code and then execute this project. We're going to test it out and see if it works or not, and then we'll do a full discussion about everything we've added. So one last line of code, I'm going to say app.listen, and then pass in 5,000, like so. Okay, so again, we're going to come back and talk about what's going on right here. But for right now, I want to run this project and figure out exactly what's going on or excuse me, I want to run it and test it out. So I'm going to change back over to my terminal. And then once over here, I'm going to run the command node index.js, like so. Now it'll appear that things just kind of hang right now. And that's OK. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to let that just sit. I'm going to change over to my browser. And I'm going to access localhost colon 5000. And I'm going to copy this link for you over to my code editor, localhost colon 5000. Okay, so now when we go back over to our browser, we're going to see a little message that says, hi there. Now, as what you see in your browser might be just a little bit different, I'll tell you right now, you might just see some plain text. I have a Chrome add-on that formats this data right here, which we refer to as JSON, a little bit more nicely. So, OK, we put together some Express application. We ran it at the terminal. And then it looks like we somehow got some message communicated to us from this code that we wrote. Like, you know, right here is hi there. But hey, what's going on right here? Right? Like, what is all this stuff doing? So let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about exactly what is going on with all this logic right here. So I'll see you in just a second.